And that sort of leads into the fiscal situation too, right? So with Europe uh, increasing their defense spending, same with the United States, mm. this is going to be persistent here. And, and therefore, I think you have to think about that long term. But cyclically, yields are up. They're up a lot. And inflation is coming down. So that gap between uh, nominal yields that you're earning and the inflation is starting to go positive. And that's a really good thing. So I think in 2023, you can start to leg into bonds. The Fed and the other central banks are almost done uh, with their hiking cycle. And uh, you know, I think now you can build a bond portfolio that provides a decent yield and can add stability to your broader fixed income our, or sort of portfolio. That, that echoes what we heard from the Aberdeen CEO this morning, who effectively said there's a wall of money yeah. waiting to come in to fixed income or beginning to come into fixed income. It sounds like you agree with that, that I there do. is a wall of money. What's going to be the catalyst? What will get those investors putting their money to work even further in fixed income markets? It's simply going to be the, the right level of yield. And so I think uh, that wall of money came in to buy. Right. And it was so big that it drove yields down. And then investors say, well, this is getting a bit too rich. So I think it's going to be a little bit up and down here uh, with the final catalyst being when do the central banks really get reprieve? When can they slow down and maybe even pause? We're getting close to that. I think in the next few months, you're going to start to see more discussion about uh, pausing. Again, we, on, the, on the longer term perspective, the mistake would be to price in inflation too low into the back end of the curve. Do you think that there is enough structural inflation in the pipeline that the Fed moves to abandon its 2% target? I don't think they will. I, I think that's too far for them to go, but maybe that should be something they should contemplate or, or otherwise should be doing, uh, because I think they're really in a box here. It's going to be very difficult to bring inflation back down to their target. Mm. Those four Ds, I think what that means is, whereas before inflation was stuck below the 2% target, remember ATI, average inflation target, or AIT, now it's going to be running higher than that. How much higher? We have mm. to wait and see. Right now, look, looking in, in the U.S. market, for example, the break-even is around 2.5% for a 10-year bond. That's what you're getting in mm. terms of compensation for long-run inflation. Is that the right number? Time will tell. So when do you see the Fed actually cutting? I mean, it sounds like a pause, you think, is on the near-term horizon. But what about actually cutting rates? And, and what does that say about your growth expectations? So our growth expectations uh, right now, and part of this depends on how far and fast the Fed goes. The mm -hmm. higher the Fed goes, the more rates will be priced in later, right? Uh, because <clears throat> as we go, if they, if they still feel like they're behind and they're getting up to six or even a little bit higher than that on the front end, that leads the possibility of a harder landing and then more cuts on the other side. We're on the camp that it's going to be a much more milder kind of downturn that we're going to experience. So uh, I think with inflation sort of being more perky out there, the Fed is more likely to pause and hold it for at least all of 2023. So rate cuts probably in my mind don't, don't start until 2024 okay. if they do at all. 